Sicker Alive. Running a minute or so behind, but I would uh, ideally have liked to have been, but we're here. So welcome, guys. I am Black Six from BZ Power, and we're here building these two lovely busts today. Um, built some of the Star Wars ones in the past. These are the first superhero ones we've done. So the very similar Venom and Carnage. Um, not sure how well you can read that there, but it says assembled from the Spider-Man universe. So of course the lovely world of licensing, uh, Sony owns the motion picture rights to the Spider-Man universe and that's why Venom and Carnage and some of the other proposed spin-offs are put out by Sony and then Disney and Marvel are putting out most of the other Marvel movies, especially now that they have bought Fox and got the X-Men rights back. Um, so, but these, you know, kind of look like they're more based on comic book designs, um, more than necessarily the, uh, the movie representations. And of course, Carnage just launched in theaters recently. I have not gotten a chance to see that one yet, but, uh, we'll, we'll see what these builds are like. As I mentioned, they do seem very similar. Um, so I feel like after we build one, the other one should go pretty quickly. Uh, Carnage looks like he's just kind of like Venom without the tongue in a different paint job. So, I'm also looking, looking forward to it though. I, I like the idea of these busts. I think they make great display pieces where you can kind of celebrate your fandom of uh, different pop culture uh, characters and, and show them off and fun builds that look great as well. So we're gonna put Carnage off to the side for now. Start by taking a look at Venom. Got that nice stylized logo on the top. He's of course got his tongue sticking out. You can see 565 parts, ages 18 and up. I'm sure the build can be done by people much younger than 18. Uh, that seems to be the Lego branding these days. Love it or hate it. I know fans have been very clear about how they feel about that. Got the Venom logo on the side here, on the back. You can see that uh, his jaw, he's got quite a bit of an underbite. It doesn't really show as apparent on the front. So I'm curious to see how that shows up in the actual model, if it's just like this, this angle or not. But we see a classic image of Venom from the comics. You see that this is seven inches tall and another uh, stylized version of Venom in all of his symbiote glory. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. See what we've got inside. All right, so we've got a nicely bound but slightly folded instruction book. And then Several bags, all thankfully numbered. So it looks like we've got six bags, two of each number, one, two, and three. So it should make things pretty straightforward to build. Nice variety of colors I'm seeing, like seeing some uh, trans neon green in here which, you know, not very apparent in the final build. So I'm curious to see how that comes in um, or what it is used for and, and why they're hiding it away. But I love when the designers include some fun and interesting colors that you don't necessarily get to see in the final build. All right, so let's get things out of the way. Get some of our trays out here. Some big plates and some Techno pieces in here. Help get the, uh, the frame going. Is there anything like the Star Wars ones? You know, it's permanently attached to the base. So we'll have to start with at least some of the base at the beginning. Go 
And get our picture picture ready. Hopefully it wants to focus here. Oh, we got some uh, some background on the build. This venomous model will grow on you. Not too much in there though. make me curious with all these different colors on the interior how uh, that's going to differ between the two models So how has everyone been doing lately? It's been a few weeks since we last did a stream. Hope everyone has been hanging in there pretty good. No, no major issues or anything to report. Got to go to Brick Fair, New Jersey, and then went on a non-Lego related trip to uh, Asheville, North Carolina with some friends. So that was a, a good break after the break of Brick Fair, which tends to be like a, a working um, vacation to some degree. All right, so this is interesting. We actually have these trans neon green pieces, like in, I see this is gonna be the base, but it's like venom dripping down. So you can't really see that on the box image. Um, I'm wondering if it's supposed to be like kind of drool dripping out of his mouth and it's going behind the uh, little display placard there that you just can't see from the, uh, the angles that they show. Which would be a very cool little touch. But yeah, so Brick for New Jersey is nice. Um, supposedly going to be the last Brick Fair New Jersey, um, just based on how that event has performed with uh, public attendance in the past. Nothing to do with uh, all the awesome A Fools who've been the creations, but just hard. Been, seemed hard to get people to uh, to attend, unfortunately. Um, but I do know there is a, a push by some people to try to get Brick Fair to go to Pennsylvania, um, to the I guess former location of Philly Brickfest. I'm I'm not too clear on the details. Uh, I did not go to Philly Brickfest this year, but from what I have heard secondhand, uh, the person who runs it says that uh, they're not going to be doing it there in 2022. Uh, they're actually going to be moving to Edison, New Jersey, which is a location that Brick Fair had been in in the past. Um, not really a great location, so good luck to them there. But now there's some people who are like, hey, it's a great venue. Brick Fair, you should, you should go there instead. So if you'd like to see Brick Fair, go to the, uh, the Oaks Convention Center in, outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
And uh, go to, I think it's like brickfair.com slash contact and let Todd, who runs it now. Me, I'll, I'll go to pretty much a new brick fair. There's a brick fair there, I'll go. All right, so we've got these Technic beams locked in. So just like the, an axle going through there and these two slopes keep the axle from popping out. So this is not going anywhere, but a little wobbly for now. This, uh, this build process is bringing back some memories of when we did it on the Star Wars characters. The base does seem familiar with that, uh, these Technic beams. Obviously those didn't have uh, little bits of drool coming out though. It's always neat when the uh, designers can sneak some stuff like that in there. Just little Easter eggs. Technic beams with some triple pins. Hey there, Aaron. Good to see you. Hope things are going well. platform here. It's interesting we've got those Technic beams in there. I'm sure they do definitely add some structural stability, um, but I almost feel like it's not overly necessary. Like if the beam went further up into the head, maybe I could see it, but it just seems like uh, they're just kind of over-engineering it, which I guess is fine. I'd rather have it not fall apart. It's like now, that's interesting. Yeah, like I can pinch this and you can see it starting trying to come apart, but those Technic beams keep it from completely collapsing. So I think if you had just like a solid core in there, it would be just about as strong. You wouldn't be able to pinch it at all because there would be no, no give in the middle. Dollar, good to see you as well. Hope things are going good. So since we're uh, building a Marvel character, uh, the What If series finale aired was this week, right? Time, time goes by. I think, yeah, it was this past week was the finale. Thought it was really interesting. Um, you know, I feel like the, the series was kind of billed as uh, one thing and started out that way. And then as time went on, it kind of like morphed into something else, which I know, at least for me and a couple people I've talked to, they were not expecting, we were not expecting that. And I, I liked where it went. I thought it was a really interesting idea. 
curious to see if it's going to tie into the MCU as a whole, or if this is still just kind of more of a one-off thing. Um, of course, we've got like uh, some multiverse themed films coming out. We got Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, WandaVision kind of played with the multiverse. Thor, or not Thor, Loki played with the multiverse. So it'll be interesting to see if, if even though this was supposed to be like a, like a non-canon series, if they somehow bring it into the Marvel canon. I've been doing pretty good. Dollar had uh, same before. Had some nice, nice breaks the past couple weeks. So back and recharge and ready to stream. I'm assuming all these red bits are kind of be like the inside of Venom's mouth, and this Technic pin here is going to be where the tongue attaches. Uh, trans neon green come in here. My microphone is acting up. Stop making that pop and noise microphone. I feel like after the last stream I did, I did start looking into replacement microphones, but then uh, I was away for two weeks, so kind of dropped that. I think I need to start digging back into that or see what my options are. That's a better view. What other Marvel stuff we got going on? Obviously, like I said, the Carnage movie just came out in theaters. But I've not gotten a chance to see that. I actually only just watched the Venom movie a couple weeks ago. I'm like, I know Carnage is coming out. And now I'm going to be building these sets on stream in the not too distant future. Should probably, probably go watch that. It was good. I enjoyed it. I feel like it was more fun than I was uh, expecting, although I'd heard good things about it. Um, so I would definitely go and see the, the Carnage movie, although I'm not gonna be in a rush to see it, I may just wait for it to come out on streaming. movies I'm looking forward to. I think top of that list is Dune. Which is so soon. So soon for Dune. Hey, Balm. Good to see ya. Saw that fun mock you posted earlier as I was uh, sharing the reminder for a stream. Popped up on Instagram. Like, oh, that's so cute. Which, uh, I guess brings up a point, in case you weren't aware, good friends of 
BZ Power, Pat and Madison, uh, DVD or Darth Vader or DV, whatever he goes by, and Yukaya got married last week. I think took a lot of us kind of by surprise. I guess we knew, uh, at least I, I knew it was coming eventually. I didn't realize it was going to be happening last week. Um, but a huge congrats to them. So happy for, for both of them. And can't wait to, to go see them again at some point and hang out and celebrate. message on my phone I'm like wait did they just get married I want to talk more about this build but there's not much to talk about just yet I don't know all the snot bricks going on the front it's just kind of just stacking bricks and plates here very hollow on the inside. Interesting, we've got these tiles going on the edges with some snot bricks next to it. So if you look on the box, I guess this is kind of where like the top of the head curve is going to be. So we're gonna be doing some snot there. some interesting offsets in a bit. All right, looks like we're just about done with the first bag now here. So we've got our little hinge piece. This is gonna be for the uh, little placard on the bottom. And uh, yeah, I guess this is supposed to be like uh, some venomous drool dripping down out of his mouth. That kind of gets hidden at least from the main box image there you can see on the side yeah i guess in the uh the side image you can see it but it's not very obvious so it's kind of a cool little easter egg that you come across as you build all right that's it for bag number one colors in here got a bunch of like pinks and stuff uh, which you can kind of see in his gums on the box so that's to be expected but lots more 
Transparent neon green. We've got a bunch more lightsaber bars. internal structure. I'm trying to get to build the eyes in this bag, so it's something to look forward to. Alright. So I think uh, I hope we'll be seeing some more interesting techniques here in bag two as we start building some of the stuff that's on different angles and such. All right, so yeah, we're gonna make use of these jumpers here. Catch some more jumpers and some quips. Music should have been going this whole time. Unless there was, I mean, I've been hearing music the whole time. Either the music was just in my head, or maybe there was something wrong with the stream. We'll say the music was just playing in my head. And I've done so many of these streams that I just imagine it playing at all times. <laughs> uh, so those aren't two by three jumpers, it's two one by three jumpers. So the one by three jumpers are still relatively new, I guess. Um, they have been around for I don't know, a couple years at this point. But yeah, no two by three jumpers yet. There's two by two jumpers, one by two jumpers, and one by three jumpers. I believe those are the only ones. I'm sure if I'm wrong, someone can, uh, can correct me there. It's got a very colorful interior here. All right, yeah, so here we had like the one set of jumpers and another set on top, which brings us back into our normal alignment so that we can have this single plate go across and line up on those jumpers. Half stud offset plus a half stud offset comes a full stud offset. Doctor, there, and get your, your hearing checked. Don't want you losing losing that. That's, that would suck. Sure, they have uh, some really impressive tiny hearing aids these days. <laughs> First snot bricks on the back. So of course, we have to cover up this empty head at some point.
looks like actually we're going to be building the back of the head. Now that we've attached some additional snot bricks there. I think after we finish this assembly here, we're probably going to do our first giveaway, or at least put the link up again. Only, only planned for two giveaways per set we're building today. So if there's three bags, got to do the giveaways every one and a half. Of some jumpers again. Give us a little half stud offset there. Give it just like a little bit of overlap. So in uh, like a news this week, we had the announcement of the Titanic set, which is uh, pretty crazy how big that model is. It was uh, very impressive to see those images. Not sure if we'll be getting one of those from Lego to, to build. <laughs> uh, love, love that, although. And you know, it's like have a hard enough time finding a spot to display the Coliseum and now I have to find a spot to display the Titanic as well. Hashtag evil problems. Alright. Interesting. Using these uh, what are two by six curve slopes, there's nothing supporting underneath here. So if you like put just like one of these on, can, it's a little fragile at first. Hopefully we lock that together a bit. The man with the, uh, that like has like interior details and stuff. Those look like a pretty awesome set. I think it'd be more fun to build in the Coliseum. I will not stop ragging on how unfun that Coliseum build was. Oh yeah, it's perfect. I do have, you know, a guest bedroom where I don't use the uh, the bathtub in, in that. So, you know, I can display the Titanic in there. And uh, yeah, it could, it could work. I like, I like that thinking. Interesting, so we're using these uh, one by two plates that have that little uh, track rail on them. And we're using those, the half stud there, to cover up that half stud remaining on these jumpers. Gives a little bit of interesting texture. All right, and some of these big curvy slopes here. To finish off the back of the head. 
And yeah, some, some nice techniques with the half stood offset. Um, just some kind of gradual increasing of the slopes. Um, nothing too complex there. And then this. on the back here on those snot bricks from before. It's starting to look kind of head shaped. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put up the giveaway link. And we've actually got another assembly to do. This may be the top of the head that we're gonna work on next. All right, camera back down with you. The, uh, that giveaway link up. Once we finish this little sub assembly here, we'll probably pick our first winner. Oh, your college is Lego club meeting. Yeah, definitely sure. I'd love to see what you guys are working on in Lego club. Wish my college had been cool enough to have a Lego club. Kids these days. But uh, yeah, have fun. Thanks for joining us, John. So yeah, nothing too crazy for the top of the head here. Just lots of stacking plates, different wedge plates and stuff. But it gets that gradual effect going. And then that little half stood offset from the back of the head kind of helps. Kind of smooth that transition over so that works out really well. Now let's go ahead and pick our first uh, giveaway winner. Woomy World, congratulations. Won a first order storm trooper buildable figure. Of course we'll send you an email and get you that prize. So this is an interesting technique. We've got a one by four snot brick. We're actually attaching headlight bricks, which of course have like that hollow back on them. I can accept a stud. Seems like an odd technique at first, uh, but then once we do this, then we're taking advantage of those hollow studs 
that the uh, headlight bricks have to insert some lightsaber bars, but then push them all the way back until they go into essentially the, uh, the hollow stud on this 1x4 snot brick. So it just kind of gives it a little bit more uh, stability here. This one, I guess, isn't supposed to go in all the way. All right, so this then is attaching like so. I guess that's supposed to be, you know, some more uh, venomous drool coming out of Venom's mouth. And again, it's a good detail. You can't really see too closely in the images for the set. Um, but then as you're building it, you get to yeah, see these cool, these cool details. Oh, I had no idea. All right, now we get to start on the teeth. So we've got these lovely little rubbery tooth pieces. I always associate these with Hero Factory. I feel like that was like the first theme they appeared in, or at least around that time. These are in brick yellow, or light tan. It's not, not a color you see those pieces in very often. I'm maybe new for the set in that color. But even if it's not, like I said, it's just not a uh, combination you see too frequently. So I'm just kind of using all these snot bricks and brackets we put in before. To slowly build out the teeth. Oh, and some more drool as well. Can't have enough venom drool. It wasn't quite this uh, drooly and gross in his uh, recent film. I feel like there's definitely some drool going on. Maybe not, not that. <laughs> it's not in drool, yes. <laughs> Good call. Those are always kind of uh, funny moments in Lego Masters when you have like Will Arnett on national television talking about snot. Yeah, it's definitely sort of very, very vicious. It is making me wonder how this lower jaw is going to attach. I guess we have these snot bricks here and we also have a Technic pin connector. So I guess that's gonna be where that lower jaw connects, it's also going to have plenty of teeth. Plenty of teeth, the, the latest dating site for dentists. Oh, and actually, part of the lower jaw is going to be this uh, wing piece, clipping on to these little one by twos with the bars. Of course, then it makes you wonder how that drool is getting all the way down there if his jaw's there. And we've got these claw pieces, also nice and rubbery. 
Compared to them being used a lot in the uh, the Chima sets. And again, I'm not sure if those have appeared in uh, light tan before. I'm sure, I've mentioned this fact before. But I'll mention it again because why not? That. Uh, my, my Lego room here is actually painted light tan or brick yellow. I literally brought a, uh, a Lego piece that was brick yellow to Home Depot. I was like, hey, can you color match this? And they did, and that is my, uh, my Lego room color. All right, so got these hinge plates on going on. I assume that's where the eyes are going to attach. Looks like these are the last of his upper teeth. Man, this is a, uh, a set that I want to now like put in my guest bedroom so that when I have guests stay, they wake up in the middle of the night and they just see like venom staring at them and freak out. He is uh, definitely a creepy, creepy looking guy. Good old Todd McFarlane. to finishing up the second bag here. So we're working on the eyes now. eyes are slightly different. Uh, I was trying to build them both at the same time and I found one 2x4 wedge and then one 2x3. Uh, so I'm trying to look at them. I'm like, oh, I guess, yeah, I guess uh, if you look on the box, you can see the, the right eye has like a stud visible where the left eye does not. All right. So I can only do so much of building both at the same time. which I say uh, kudos to the set designers for not making it perfectly symmetric. It's like I will always take advantage of any symmetry that they put in the set. But if there's like a little, little tweak and stuff, it's cool. digging that eye shaping like it's upside down right now but you can definitely see the kind of iconic uh, silhouette in his eyes right. it tells me to attach this once I add on these couple of cheese slopes here but I'm not going to so I can build finish building the other eye and then we can do a better comparison to see just how different they are
Okay, so yeah, here are the eyes. It's not like super apparent. I guess why I didn't even notice it, but if you look, this eye is a stud taller. Um, so it uses that two by three wedge and then a two by two wedge to kind of give like a little bit of extra slant. Um, and then also uses a two by two curve tile instead of the one by one quarter round tile. So it just kind of gives like a little bit of asymmetry and kind of makes it look like he's got like one eye squinted a little, like maybe he's like winking at you kind of thing. So that's a really, really cool little detail that they added. Um, I would say like the, if I could give like any sort of criticism on that topic, it's that uh, it looks like, now, now that I know to look for it, it looks like Carnage is done the exact same way. It would have been cool if it had been like a little different on Carnage. Oh yeah. That is looking pretty sick. All right, on to the last bag. and build ourselves our next sub-assembly. Still have some more trans neon green here, but I think that's mostly going to be just like internal details at this point.
some interesting stuff with all these jumpers getting some more offsets in here looks like this is all going to be part of the forehead curious to see exactly how these hinge plates work out looks like they're just kind of going to be part of the eyebrows essentially like the eye ridges some of these uh, riot shields in here which uh, yeah, they're made for Star Wars I believe was their first appearance but the designers have been like oh man these are super good because they have like this nice wide mounting point you know two by three uh, silhouette so it makes it nice and sturdy of a connection so just like a one by two where you can easily like lever it off it would have like a lot more be more susceptible to torque um, and then I assume the uh, the offset there works out very nicely which is not you know a, a way you can attach a bar there's not a lot of other pieces that would give you that connection in that profile so it became it's become a very useful piece and now back in I think it was bag one we attached these pink clips here and so the bars on those riot shields go on and uh, yeah sort of come together and so yeah, there are those hinge plates which you know even though this right like the the forehead here is all kind of 90 degrees this kind of rotates parts to 45 and I believe we're gonna be using these guys on here to really finish off the eyes later on but we're not quite there yet pieces finish off that part and then how far down are these supposed to go okay I think these are kind of a fragile connection since they're only on this one by two plate attached on this angle but he is looking very mean and evil don't look at him from the side though I really hope we do a good job filling in this gap like looking at the box and look at it, uh, not, not so sure we're gonna fill that in too well, which is gonna be a little bit of a shame. All right, we're about to try. And here, I am once again going to assume symmetry until proven that I can't. Only if I can actually build it symmetrically.
All right, so the sides of his head do have these little curve slopes kind of jutting out, so we get to see now how good of a job it is to do it covering up. All right, it's, it's looking not too, too shabby there. Oh, as long as you don't disconnect that tile. If you look too hard in there, you can see it, but I'd rather have these complex angles and a little bit of a gap than have it all be like on stud or something. comes out really nicely where you have like studs going up in the tile and then studs going out. I do know, you know, some people like to build their, their mocks and even some Lego sets like have very few studs showing, but I, I do like having studs showing because like, you know, it tells you, hey, this is Lego. Like it is cool and there's some complex techniques, but it's still Lego. All right, and now I get to work on the jaws. Looks like make sure you use the right one. It's got a few different wedge plates here. Some uh, mixel joints going in here. Looks like that's going to be how we attach maybe to the side at some point once we get there. Also, like these one by two rounded plates in uh, pink. nice to get those parts in some more colors because they can be very useful. Some of his uh, lower teeth coming in here.
Anyone else here OCD like me and always wants to make sure the little notches in these teeth pieces are, are lining up in the same direction? Like obviously the instructions show to do that, but you know, it's not key to the, uh, the building process. So like it's not gonna work if you don't do it. I was kind of curious if it's like, is that just me? Am I the weirdo here? And there are other weird people out there. I feel like the, uh, the rubberiness of these pieces has changed over time. And they're much less uh, forgiving than they used to be. Or maybe more flexible. You know, that's what I mean. It's like they're more flexible now. Like trying to insert this in here. You just see like how much that's giving. I'm like afraid I'm going to break off the little bar at the end. Uh, looking pretty angry, <laughs> pretty vicious. He is gonna tear you apart. I feel like they're going through an effort to kind of hide the ball joint there with this uh, two by two wedge plate. It's a nice little detail.
attachment. So this bit is going to attach onto those snot bricks, not the Technic brick, just the snot bricks. And so we've got a little bit of flex in here, mainly flexing inward, which will be good because it'll line up with our little wing piece here. And we do other side. It kind of, uh, at this point, you know, reminds me of an elite from Halo with uh, the multiple mandibles. But you can see how that's gonna kind of come together. And that overbite or underbite is, uh, is really real. Okay, I already did all of that. Let's go ahead, so we're almost done now. Put up our giveaway link again, if you have not already entered. If you did enter before, you do not need to enter again. You are good to go. I guess I was supposed to build this and attach the jaw piece before I connected the jaw to the head. Oh well. Yeah, it's still fine. I can easily clip that in somewhat easily. Oh, maybe not that easily. Once you've got that clipped in there, that kind of locks the entire jaw assembly together. It's not going anywhere. And then, of course, we cannot forget the tongue. Which connects that Technic bit. And you can kind of curl it around. And we've got our printed plate, Lego Marvel Venom. All right, and that is it for our first set here. So let's go ahead, switch our camera. Show them off. It's nice and solid, you can hold in the palm of your hand and it's not gonna fall apart. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely is a, a very creepy, venomy look. So I guess a perfect build here for the month of October. You know, everyone calls it spooky month since we've got Halloween coming. Um, I guess the one thing is like knowing that it's there from the build and that the right eye is a little bigger than the left eye. It's kind of cool to know. But looking at it on camera, like yeah, you can't, you can't really tell that difference. It's almost like, was it worth the effort? Uh, on the part of Lego to do that. Um, I love I love the mouth. I think it comes to out so well with the uh, little pink, all the different pink clips to attach the, the teeth to, and then those tan teeth, yeah, instead of white, give it just like a, that much contrast. And then of course you got the tongue that you can uh, kind of pose. So the only thing in the, uh, the build that can pose is the tongue. Um, but it, uh, you know, definitely needed to be there. The, uh, the jaw, it doesn't really move. Um, like I said, once you kind of lock everything in place, even though there are clip hinges and ball joints, um, it kind of locks everything securely. 
that little wing piece on the bottom. Uh, you can fold it down a little bit, but obviously you want to push that up to uh, cover the bottom of the mouth. Um, it's amazing how well that works to cover any gaps. So yeah, this is, you know, pure display piece. Um, not really any play features on there, but I think it works well. And then little details that you don't notice from the box art, like, uh, like that drool coming down. I am curious how that drool is getting under here. It's like it drips down to the bottom of his lip and then comes back up and down. A uh, little, little physics defying there. Um, but if you look closely in the mouth or if you're watching while you built, there's a whole bunch of other trans neon green drool pieces in there to kind of add to that effect. And uh, the sides, fairly simple. There's still some nice techniques in there with some snot building. Same thing with the back and the, even the top has some nice kind of uh, offsets and stuff to, to help give it that curved, rounded shape. Um, and yeah, you just got that, that underbite, very extreme. All right, so that was Venom. Let's uh, turn off our giveaway link and pick our second winner. It melts through his throat. Yeah, I guess I guess that's where the venom could go. But then it's like, why isn't there a hole in his throat? All right. Winner number two for today. It's gonna be Bellum nom 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 nom. Who won a Stormtrooper Commander buildable figure. Congrats, Matt. And now we have to update our overlay here. For our second set. And so Carnage, I'm just trying to do the math real quick, has 19 fewer pieces uh, than Venom. Even though he looks like he is pretty much the same from a design perspective. Obviously he's missing the tongue but I mean, at its core here, the tongue is like one, two, three, four uh, pieces. So I'm not sure where the other 15 difference is coming. Maybe he, uh, he doesn't have any of the drool either. So that could be a, a big difference. Um, I do like how compared to the, uh, the Venom box here, Carnage has the red stripe along the bottom, uh, fits with his color scheme. One thing he does have that Venom didn't is a lot of printed parts, or possibly stickers. Uh, I think some of these are definitely stickers. So Venom, uh, no stickers. Carnage, potentially quite a few, because there's obviously some on these 2x4 curved slopes, this roof piece, these pieces, and then some 2x4 tiles on the side. Um, so a bit of a difference there. But a lot of the construction does look pretty much the same as it did in Venom, but uh, let's go find out for sure by opening it up. I guess we'll look on the back of the box real quick first. Again, he's got the, uh, the severe underbite and a couple comic representations of him there. Again, like Venom, Carnage has six bags, numbered one through three. It's got an instruction booklet here. And then he does have a sticker sheet with quite a few stickers. There's even a pink one I did not see earlier. So I'm not sure that, where these are going to go. Uh, maybe on the top of his head or something. I'm trying to look at the box and try to match them up. 
because we've got like the two by four curve slopes, the roof piece, his eyebrows. I guess these are the sides of his head, which were plates on Venom. So there's a little bit different on Carnage then. All right, well, I need to speculate because we can just open things up and build. by name, carnage by nature. Alright. Alright, yeah, so there's Venom. We can check him out there while we start working on So this is definitely looking like it's going to be uh, very, very similar. Experience here. So probably uh, not going to be talking about it too much as I build it. Unless you guys have specific questions or comments about the build.
chugging on through. They've got a lot of color swaps here. They've got these pink one by four snot bricks where we had uh, red ones appearing most frequently with Venom. It's hard to tell from the box image what color, color the inside of Carnage's uh, mouth is. I think it may be pink based on just the colors I'm seeing in the bags. Slight difference here. We have uh, three plates making this up. I believe this was like one two by whatever two by ten plate instead of two individual plates. That's probably more just uh, parts that are in production and availability. It's like yeah, you don't want to add a big red plate to production just for one set when you already have two smaller ones that can do the trick just fine. Interesting, yeah, some of these internal pieces are exactly the same. Like this dark gray and uh, yellow here. One of those cases of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Interesting. Instead of all those trans neon green one by one round plates, we have trans red instead. Which I guess fits with uh, with his character. And if he is not going to be uh, dripping drool everywhere, trans red fits. And we've got trans red one by two plates as well.
curious about these little pieces of black in here. I feel like those are going to be visible in the final build. Maybe that's just supposed to be like a, a little bit of a highlight or something or what. Too visible since we've got these yellow snut bricks going in. color of the one by three jumpers in yellow instead of blue just for internal measures there all right that was it for bag one speeding on through Looks like most of the stickers don't happen until bag three, so that's what's gonna really slow us down there. But uh, just like with Venom, where we are about halfway through bag two here, we'll do our third giveaway.
like how both of them use these pink one by two by one and two thirds snot bricks. Like these days, they should be just known as uh, like brickheads bricks. Seems like that's what they are. Most frequently used on. Um, they don't show up a lot of other stuff, but they're very much connected with the, uh, the brickheads at this point. Yeah, unfortunately, the close-up camera only has autofocus. Should probably switch the two cameras. I, I like, I've been liking having, using the close-up camera primarily instead of the close-up camera being like the, uh, the inset. Um, I think that in an ideal world where everything is perfectly in focus is better because you guys can see what I am building more clearly. But that only works if it's in focus. Maybe for uh, for next time, I will remember to make that switch. That's what happens when you take a few weeks off. You forget that all like those good ideas that you had been thinking about. Oh yeah, I should do this. Right, and with those snot bricks added, we can proceed to work on the back of the head. And it all form the head. Yeah, we already did our Voltron build. Oh, that was a good, good show reboot. Also a fantastic set. Nick did a outstanding job there with the, uh, the limitations he had.
Well, this is uh, another difference. Since you don't have the brick version of this piece, you have to stack three of these plates together here. Whereas in here, we had uh, the solid brick version. So same end result, but just uh, thought it was worth pointing out there. Head complete. Top of the head is attached. It's looking like a head shaped thing. Okay, and before we get too far in, let's pick winner number three. Brickus, congratulations. You have won a Jin Urso buildable figure. So I need to figure out what is going on with uh, shipping to you. Fortunately, the last time I looked, there were still some issues, but hopefully that can be cleared up at this point. been cute if the scalp was on a hinge and the hollow interior space had a diorama that would be kind of cool yeah yeah you know, like on the uh nintendo entertainment system where it had that like little panel that you could remove and it had some interesting interior details there i mean as you saw when i was 
like looking at the the venom set just now like this this comes out pretty easily so if you wanted to mod the set for yourself you could easily put something in there or if you wanted to just uh use this as like a like a hidden uh book on your bookshelf kind of thing where you know you just uh hide something in there that you don't want people easily finding while it's displaying on a shelf who's gonna think to look inside a lego set well, everyone who watches the stream, obviously, but hopefully they're not going to be robbing your house. Alright, so, where the uh, Venom set had that um, Technic attachment point here, we're just putting in some cheese slopes on Carnage. Kind of fill in that gap. So yeah, also, oh, that was right, also in this area is where the drool was coming out. Okay, so that's another big, big difference. It's a 19 piece difference between Venom and Carnage is uh, no drool coming down here either. Using the uh, same wing piece here. Oh, then actually this needs to get a sticker on it though. Interesting. It's our first sticker of the build. We got pink stripe on this wing that I guess is supposed to be kind of like his tongue. Or at least give you the idea of a tongue. for the eyes. I'm going to keep those unfolded, unhinged, because I feel like it would be easier to attach the eye and then fold up so you can push it straight on. All right, time to build the eyes. The eyes of March. Looks like that's going to be the Last big assembly here in bag two.
reach the point where the eyes diverge. So we're just gonna focus on the one. Hey, LaRocca, happy birthday to you, bud. Hope you're having a good birthday. We get to do something fun. Although you are here watching the stream, so maybe you're not doing something fun. <laughs> like the uh, the differences in the eyes as far as like that little bit of addition of red to them for carnage here Again, two eyes, just slightly different. The, uh, the right eye is a little bit taller there. Right, and now we need to pop those on. You cannot attach them straight on like I was hoping to. You do have to attach them while the hinge plate is hinged. together fairly nicely. And now, moving on to our last bag. Where have we been going? Just at hit the two hour mark. It's a pretty good time, I feel. is going to be where we've got uh, the majority of those stickers coming in. At least the, uh, the display plaque is still printed for Carnage. That would kind of kind of really suck if uh, that was a sticker too where it was printed for Venom. Maybe one day we can get the Star Wars UCS sets to have printed display plaques too. Definitely understand that would be uh, kind of expensive to do. But I mean, I guess, you know, if they were able to do it for these sets, can it be that much more expensive or difficult to fit in the uh, parts cure production line? For a smaller plaque and a bigger plaque? I don't know for sure. I do not claim to be an expert there. But it is a question. That maybe someone with uh, some more insider knowledge could answer someday. Maybe if uh, Lego designers ever start going to fan conventions again. Once that is safe to do, 
especially with international travel restrictions, we can ask them. Time for some stickers. And they are all slightly different. Like if you look at the sheet, you can see that it's like one pattern that's kind of spread out amongst the stickers. So do you have to pay attention which goes where? And since these are on curved slopes and not like um, two by four tiles, they, there is a proper way to do it. You can't just like flip it around later if you do it backwards so do you have to keep an eye on it as you do this shields again. Kind of snap that on there. There we go. Coming along nicely. And next batch of stickers. So I can definitely understand why these aren't printed, but I don't know, it's like a, a little bit frustrating here that like, you know, you've got this fairly nice expensive set, which requires essentially all these stickers. Yeah, I know some people don't like applying stickers, uh, BZ Power Reporter, Chalk of Frogs, very notorious for doing set reviews without applying stickers, which is fine. That's obviously his uh, his choice. Um, but like for a set like this, to not do the stickers, I feel like would really take away from the uh, the look of it. Yeah, 
here. It's not like it's just uh, some control panels in the cockpit or some workings on the wings. This stuff is like... pretty key to Carnage as a character here. Stickery forehead. Now for the sides of the head, which we'll have in our last stickers. The last two stickers at least are not a continuation of a pattern. They're pretty much just mirror images of the same pattern. So it does make it a little easier to do them. Plus they're not on a curved surface, which also helps immensely. sides of the head finishing the stickers. I like how it kind of continues from the eyes and using that like black flame look coming out there.
Alrighty, alright. Time for the jaw. And this is gonna be just about done. Spiky, spiky teeth. I understand, you know, obviously it's based on the uh, source material and everything. But I do like that um, Venom has, like, the, the tan teeth instead of the black. I think the black isn't nearly, doesn't stand out nearly as much, you know. Totally skip the step. Nice. It's interesting. Venom had a lot 
more of the darker pink on the inside of his mouth with the red, whereas Carnage has like a lighter pink. You know, obviously you want to have some, uh, some contrast. With the rest of the head, since obviously he's got a lot of red on him. So that lighter pink definitely makes sense. Here, I've got one more giveaway to do. So, throwing that link up there, making sure you all enter before our last giveaway for today. to attach our jaws. Boop, boop. Hopefully that's in the last couple steps. But it doesn't look like it. Uh-oh. All right, we're gonna have to run back through the instructions before we uh, finish things up for today and figure out where I missed putting a two by three plate. There's another difference is that uh, Carnage's two lower front teeth are like that, whereas with uh, Venom, they rotated 90 degrees, and that, I think, was to give enough space uh, for the tongue to slither its way through. camera over. <laughs> All right, I think we can uh, switch to our main shot anyway. Get our trays out of here. All right, just need to figure out where I screwed up and did not put that piece, or I guess there is a possibility that they accidentally gave me an extra. Um, 
But I would say more often than not, if you have an extra piece, it's because you messed up somewhere, not because Lego messed up. All right, yes, I think it's supposed to be underneath here. That would explain it. I mean, it worked just fine without it, but probably a little sturdier with it. Okay, so we are done. So here is Carnage. Again, very, very similar to Venom in the build. 19 fewer pieces, which mainly come out in the tongue and the fact that he does not have any drool or venom coming out. So much more basic, uh, I guess not much more, but a more basic build in that regard. Still got that severe underbite. All right, so yeah, can kind of compare them side to side. So you can see that our Carnage has uh, some stickers on the side here in addition to the front. Um, but the build is mainly the same. He's got like, a little bit of black sticking out on the sides. Kind of makes for some nice color, uh, some contrast. You know, I would say, um, like Carnage with the red color versus the black is definitely the, the more vibrant one, kind of stands out more. Um, the stickers add for some cool looks on it there. But uh, Venom, I think, is, you know, Venom's the original, right? He's got the tongue, which I think helps make up, uh, you know, adds that extra splash of color that Carnage doesn't have. And also the, the tan teeth with the pink gums versus black teeth with black gums. I, it, even though Carnage is red and brighter, um, his mouth kind of disappears, whereas Venom's mouth, like, just pops. Honestly, I think I like that look better. And then, of course, he's got, like, the drool coming down there. And if you look back and within the teeth, he's got some in there, too. All right, so we've got one more giveaway to do. So let's go ahead and get that done. Turn that off. Our last one will be. Ah, dollar! Congratulations! You won an Elite Tie Fighter pilot. I know you had to bounce, but you'll still be getting that email, so we can get you that prize in a little bit. All right, so yeah I kind of went over my final thoughts but if you had if you can only pick one of these if you're interested in these sets I would say go with Venom um, he's the original he doesn't have stickers uh, and I really like the that contrast between the tan teeth and the black body um, like it, it really just pops like that's gonna stand out on a shelf those white eyes and those tan teeth that tongue sticking out it's gonna look pretty awesome uh, and then uh, versus Carnage here, where that mouth just becomes like a black hole. I'm not, not a big fan of that, even though there is some pink back there. It's just like not quite enough to really add some contrast there. Well, hey there, Ari. Sorry you slept through the stream. Better luck next time. You can always watch it. We'll be posting it all on YouTube. I'm not saying that I, I would recommend watching but uh, I can probably like, what, put it on like 2x speed and watch the builds go together. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely, definitely fun sets. Um, you know, there were some cool techniques in like the eyebrows, the jaws were really coolly constructed. Uh, so not, not a bad value if you are like a Marvel superhero fan and you are looking for like a display piece versus like a, a play set to build. I think these are you know, pretty, pretty good options. Hopefully we get some more in the future. Uh, obviously we have Iron Man, which we have not built yet. 
but hopefully we get like a Spider-Man or an Ant-Man. I think those would be some good, good options too. Uh, could do e they could even do things like do a normal Spider-Man, a Miles Morales Spider-Man. You can have the same red and black uh, color palette swaps. Although I feel like Spider-Man would be difficult. You're gonna need a lot of stickers to get like the web shaping on on that. So maybe that's why we haven't seen him yet. But uh, Ant-Man and Star-Lord. There we go. Those are two more you can do that I think would work out really well. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, even those of you who slept in, appreciate you coming by. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, and uh, congrats to our winners today. We'll be back in another week or two. Stay tuned to our social media channels and the BZ Power Front page to see uh, what we will be building next. And uh, until then, this will be Black Six from BZ Power. Wishing you all a great rest of your day. Hope you stay safe and get vaccinated, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.